Joining us, hey, let's talk a little debate from last night. Congressman Dr. John Fleming. Dr. John, how are you this morning? Thank you for joining us. I am doing uh, fantastically well. How are you doing, Robert? Good. good. Did, did you suffer through the entire thing? You know, I, I don't know. Maybe I had some sort of uh, uh, fascination with it. Uh, it. It was kind of interesting, the whole thing. Uh, we, it, you know, it's Sort of like the Super Bowl, we've been anticipating it for quite some time. Speaking of what I learned, I said a while ago, what I learned from last night's debate is that the Saints are absolutely horrible. <laughs> it's it's oh my gosh, they have I could play I could play safety for the Saints. Okay, tell me what you saw in the debate last night. Tell me what you saw, what you thought. Well, I think that. Uh, Donald Trump um, decided to take, in fact, they were reporting it this morning, the high road. There were so many ways he could initiate uh, Hillary Clinton, but I think he's concerned about, uh, you know, looking like a bully. You know, he's up against a woman, so he has to be careful about that. Uh, but there were some opportunities that he could have counterpunched that he didn't and should have. Uh, so I think he tried to play it a little bit safe, and so... On the other hand, she was quite aggressive, uh, but that may have been the best place for, for the Donald at this point. The, the consensus, if you will, among you know the smart people, the pundits, the analysts, was that Trump last night had to sell himself to the American people as presidential. Do you think he succeeded? I think he did. Uh, I think that's precisely the point. Had he uh, you know, called her crooked Hillary or lying Hillary, I think that really would have turned a lot of voters off. And uh, so while point by point she may have actually beat him, uh, at least in, in the eyes of some, I didn't think so, but, but I'm, I'm partisan. Uh, on the other hand, it did, to me, he looked presidential, and I think maybe that was the most important part. Did he make any big mistakes that you saw? I, did, I really didn't see any. No, I, I didn't. I mean, you know, again, I, I was kind of, a little nervous and holding my breath that he might kind of break free from discipline and go go for the throat with some type of, of personal comment or or personal appearance or something like that. And he, he did not do that. So, let, let me ask you this. Did, did it feel to you like it did to me, like you're on the freeway and there's a big wreck in the other lane and you're kind of rubbernecking <laughs> and you're waiting to see how bad it is? <laughs> I guess. I guess uh, now that I think about it, sure. <laughs> Did she make any critical mistakes, big stumbles? Well, I don't think so. Uh, I, I, I would again. I, there were a lot of things that she needs to uh, talk about. She needs to answer for, like her emails and the, the Clinton Foundation uh, that she failed to do, and uh, also she denied um, having supported TPP. Uh, but then later there was a clip that was run that show, showed full-throated support of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. So, again, I think when fact-checkers go to work on this, they're going to find a lot of things that she's really denying now that she's, that she really did say in support. Now, the one thing that me as an undecided voter, and I've said this, our listeners get mad at me, that's okay. I want to see his tax return now. More than ever, he better release it. I want to see it because now I think he's hiding something. Does that trouble you? <laughs> well, I want to see her medical records. Uh, I don't want a president who's going to die in office. Uh, but don't we have a right to his tax returns? Don't we have a right to see it? Well, it's it's a, it's a political question. Uh, can he get elected without showing him? If he can, then... I suppose not. I think the same, same is true with Hillary. Let me jump in. It's amazing to me. It's amazing to me that all the people in America, like like Aaron or me or Matt in the other room, who every April struggle to pay as little tax as possible, get angry when people with lots of money struggle to pay as little tax as possible. I just... It, if it's good enough for me, it's good enough for Donald Trump. Dr. John, recent poll results. The presidential race in Louisiana, Trump over Clinton by 10 whole points, 45-35. But even more interesting from that very same poll is the Senate results. That race is really, really tight. And you know someone who is near and dear to you who is in that race. Yes. yes. It's, uh, it's you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
I'm very close to that person. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the poll came out yesterday. A poll came out yesterday by JMC Analytics, and it shows that I'm now tied for first. It's a three-way tie for first uh, place in the U.S. Senate race. Uh, but here's the thing: uh, John Kennedy, who's been in the lead, uh, has been in the lead based on his very strong name ID. Uh, he's collapsing. He's now uh, he's now four points behind. Uh, the lead, uh, and uh, and and I, I've been going up steadily for the last uh, three or four weeks. Uh, Charles Bustani, the other congressman in the race, he's leveled off, maybe dropped a point, and it looks like uh, Foster Campbell, our good friend Foster, our very liberal, uh, lawsuit loving and tax loving uh, friend, is also tied for first. Subtly put, uh, Doctor John. Subtly put. Yes, <laughs> John. I got an idea. This will help you. You ready? Yes. Change your name to Ronald Reagan. <laughs> like in the like in the Eddie Murphy you movie. You have John Kennedy, Ronald Reagan in the runoff. Well, actually, I had considered changing my name to George Washington. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. John Fleming, Congressman John Fleming, a pleasure as always. You know that you are welcome anytime, and hopefully the next time you're in town, we have a special new chair waiting just for you. Awesome, guys. Thank you so much. A pleasure as always. Local news is up next. Keel News Radio Time, 729.